Yeah, just got up. I'm getting ready to go grab a little bit of breakfast and then head up to see C Dub. <laughs> I'll see you guys in a bit. Oh yeah, they still have it. Wait a minute, who, who's this guy? Who the heck are you? <laughs> I know, I know, it's a mess. Everything's been a mess lately. <laughs> okay, guys, so I just got back from seeing Calvin up in San Francisco. He gave me some samples, so I'm going to be trying those out pretty soon. I got to straighten all this out, but I got a little project I'm planning on working on here in just a moment. It involves some blue hatchbox and some orange shaxon that I have left over. So let me get this all straightened out, and I'll see you in just a moment. Hey guys, so got everything cleaned up a little bit so I can get going on all this. Um, I want to start out by saying thank you to everybody who has showed me the love and support on on on, on social media and, and such such forth. Um, my mom passed away back on the 7th of sep September and uh, we just uh, had her funeral uh, just a few days ago. And uh, so it's been kind of an ordeal getting everything all kind of straightened back out, but it's it's slowly getting there. So um, I think I'm ready to start kind of <laughs> getting back into the swing of things, hopefully here. Anyway, uh, so today what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look at the new Cura 2.7. I just downloaded it. I'm installing it right now on the computer. So as soon as I get that done, I'm going to try loading my profile from version 2.6.2. Uh, and hopefully it'll just go ahead and and be a seamless process, but uh, let's get into it and see how it turns out. Okay guys, so here you can see we have uh, 2.7.0 loaded up in Cura. A uh, little bit different layout than what I remember from 2.6.2, but uh, it shouldn't be that much that much different. Okay, so what I want to go ahead and do is I want to see if I can load in my profile. It looks like it might already be in here. Yeah, it already actually lo already loaded from my old one. So I have the fine number two. Uh, this is that sliced at 0.15 millimeter layer height. Um, if you don't mind, I'll go ahead and go over what I have here at the moment. Layer height, 0.15. Uh, initial layer height is 0.3. That way if there's any gaps in the glass, it'll, it'll make up the difference. Wall thickness, I usually go 1.2, so it's uh, three parameters, three bottom layers, three parameters, three top layers. Uh, and let's see, They'll just go with lines on that, line directions I don't worry about. I'm going 10% on the on the model I'll be slicing here. Zigzag is when I started using the last one. Uh, it's supposed to use less uh, support material, so I'm going to go ahead and, and try that out with this. Uh, gradual infill steps, I'm not going to really worry about that right now. <clears throat> Print temperature, we're going to go ahead and go 210. I can adjust further on the machine if I need to. But uh, bill plate, I have a 65. That seems to work perfectly fine for me on glass. And of course, this is the number one thing anytime you put a new slicer in. You want to make sure that you have your the right size millimeter and the right size nozzle. So I have to make absolutely sure on the nozzle size here in a moment. Retraction speed, I have it as uh, 50 millimeters per second. Retraction distance is 3 millimeters. Retraction minimum travel, 2 millimeters. That way it doesn't do it over and over and over real fast. Minimum extrusion distance window, 3 millimeters. It just seemed like a good number. Uh, print speed, 60 millimeters per second seemed to give me the best uh, resolution. Uh, you can print faster with a machine. Uh, it's supposed to be up to 80, but I just I, I like printing a little bit slower. Uh, outer wall speed, I usually it, this one actually will split it in half. Like if I switch that to 70, it'll automatically change it to 35. So I can just knock that back down to 60 and I'll automatically put it back to 30. Travel speed, 90 millimeters per second is plenty fast enough. I don't need it jerking around a whole lot. Initial layer speed, 25 millimeters per second. That way it gives it a little bit slower first layer. <clears throat> Excuse me. Combing mode, I just go ahead and use it. Why not? Avoid printed parts when traveling. That's always best. Z hop when retracted. I have that checked. Z hop height. Please, please, please. If you have a giant arm D200 3D printer, 
do not set it above 0.75 millimeters. Anything, and even above 0.5 millimeters, you are playing with fire. <laughs> and I'm not saying that to be mean or, or drug trade in any way. All I'm saying is if you go above, which in my case, I went with one millimeter Z hop height. And when I did, it made the pr printer completely freak out. It would ex ignore, ignore the end stops. It would make the steppers grind away at each other. <laughs> it was just it made the machine go completely nuts. It took me a few days to figure out. And actually it wasn't me. It was a G tech support team that went through my slicer settings and said, change this. I changed it to 0.5 or less, and I've had no problems since. So if you have a printer that's freaking out, take this number and drop it down and see what it does. Um, in this case, I, I recommend a 0.25 seems to work perfectly fine for me. It's, it's doing just fine. But uh, go 0.5 or less, and you'll, you'll, you'll be happy you did. Okay, enable part cooling. I've got that set up. Uh, 100% at 0.5 millimeter on the, the layer height. So usually on the second uh, layer, it'll usually kick in. <clears throat> I have the skirt set down for three millimeters and three millimeter, or for three, three trips around the print to make sure the nozzle's printed and then primed, I mean, and then three millimeters for the skirt distance from the model. That way, if it's the model's too far off to one side, I'll know it by looking at the skirt. And I really see print sequence all at once. That's all we need on that. I know there's a lot more I can add into this, but I will do that at a later time. Right now, this seems to be working fine for me. So I am going to go ahead and I'm going to slice a model. Let's go ahead and open a model. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to print. I'm getting ready to go to Colorado to visit some family back there. They are all Broncos fans. Anybody who lives in Colorado is a Broncos fan, period. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and print these keychains for them. And I'll, try, I'll uh, do this in a separate video where I actually print them. But when on the Giant Arm D200 and also on the Meat Creator 2, for some reason, when you drop a model in Cura, it will print further to the left of the print bed than instead of being in the center. So what I usually do is I'll take that model and I will grab it and I will, if I can get to move. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll grab the model. I guess you gotta grab it by the arrow now and I'll move it over, I, I recommend about 15 millimeters. So let's just go ahead and go 15 to see how that works out later on. That's close enough. And by doing that, for some reason, it'll it'll be pretty much centered on the print bed. So I don't know why that it works out that way, but it does. Now in my case, I want to take and multiply this one. So I'm going to multiply the selected model. And by moving it to where I feel it should be, when I do this, it should put all the parts around it. And it actually took and it moved it, that one over there, which it shouldn't have. But it's still for the, far enough in. Each one of these is uh, 10, 10 millimeters. So that's still going to be on the print bed. I'm not really worried about it. Okay, guys. So that's going to do it for this particular video. But uh, please join me in the next video where I actually print these out. And I'm actually going to take and let's take a look at the layers here. Uh, let's see if I can zoom in. I'll just do it right like that. So there's going to be a total of 31 layers. And if I drop these down, looks like about layer 20, 21 is where it's going to start printing the, the embossed portion, the part that sticks up above the, the floor of the print. So right now it's saying that this model would take, for all these, will print take 5 hours and 38 minutes. So... What I'm going to do is I'll uh, time my print, so uh, I'll come back out, say, at about the three-hour mark, maybe three-and-a-half-hour mark, and just see where it's at on the printing. And then as soon as that top layer, that, that full surface prints to where I can change the color, I'm going to change the color of the filament and then uh, finish out the print. So hopefully it'll be a dual-color print. 
But like I said, that's going to be in a different video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Hey guys, thank you for watching this video. If you like it, please give it a thumbs up. If you like the channel, please subscribe. I sure appreciate it. You can do that by clicking on the link over here. Don't forget to ring the bell too. That way you'll be notified when a video comes out. Also, if you'd like to support the channel, please click on my Patreon page over here. You can support the channel from there. If you'd like to check out one of my other videos, please give these a shot. I think you're going to love them. Oh yeah, you're going to like them. Have a great day and take care. Bye.